Hello everyone, welcome to Next Gen AI Academy. In this video, we are going to learn about Java data types. Before we start data types, let's do a short recap on Java variables. We know one thing, a Java variable is the name given to a memory location. If you are new to this video, please watch the previous video to get more clarity about the Java variable. Then in order to declare a Java variable, first we have to mention the data type, then variable name, assignment operator that is single equal to then the value. So this is the syntax we have to follow to declare the Java variable and sample you can see it here. Now we will learn about the data type. First we will learn the layman terminology then theory followed by the code implementation. Just imagine a scenario. Now you are in a very big apartment which contains a parking slot like this. You are rich enough to buy the entire parking slot but you have only two cars. Just think me and tell whether you will buy the entire parking slot or two or three parking slot. If you decided to buy two or three parking slot, then you almost completed the data times topic. Yes, the reason why you want to buy just two or three parking slot is first reason to save the money and second reason even if you buy the entire parking slot also we will not be using it and third reason in case if you bought the entire parking slot then another person can't use your area the same scenario we are going to apply for java data types and here this is going to be the parking slot and this variable 1 and variable 2 going to be each house. As per our story, this first name variable by this entire memory location means what will happen? Other person, other variable cannot use this particular memory area. And also in real time scenario, we have to add additional RAM. It means we have to be smart enough in choosing the memory allocation for each variables. If you consider real time project, we will have n number of variables. If you are not considering the memory allocation properly, then what will happen? Definitely it will going to consume a lot of RAM which affect the performance of the application. Now let's see types of data types. Data types consist of two types. One is primitive, another one is non-primitive. Then in primitive, we have four classification that is Boolean, character, integer and floating point. In non-primitive, we have string array and classes this array and classes we will learn later and we already learned about string data type that is to declare the string value within the double quotes so from the non-primitive data type we will learn about string only okay let's move on to the primitive data type in the primitive data type first one is boolean so what is boolean true or false these two values are considered as boolean to save these two value we have to use the boolean data type which consumes a very less memory allocation the syntax will be boolean variable name equal to true or false based on the scenario and this data type we use it to set the flag for looping statement the next one character character means single letter so in order to declare a single letter a b c it can be any letter 
for that you have to use char remember just four letter not the entire character you can imagine it's like similar to parking a scooter for that how much space needed we have to buy that then comes the integer for integer we have four types byte short int and long we'll see that in depth in next slide then followed by floating point float and double so integer means a numerical number it can be a negative number or a positive number but floating point means it's a decimal points number for example 3.17 so we are dealing with decimal points no so that comes for the floating point number let's see integer this is very very important data type we use it in the entire java or automation project as we already know integer will be classified into four category byte short int and long and you can see the tabular form here you no need to remember this size or these values just understand the concept so integer talks about the storing the range of number so based on the numerical number range you have to choose which data type it will store for example byte so if your input value between these two range from minus 128 to plus 127 then you can choose byte data type for example if you mention each month as a numerical number then we will have 12 numbers for 12 numbers this much space is enough 8 bit so we can go for byte same for short if the number range between these two values then the third one int mostly all the automation project we will be using int a lot so for example the salary employment numbers all falls under the integer and then comes the fourth one long mostly used for the scientific calculation that is distance between the planets so at that time you need a very big number range to save the value then you can use long in automation the mobile number we can save using the long especially if in india it starts with 9 so indian mobile numbers will not fall within this range so we have to choose long at that time so the conclusion is integer talks about the range of numbers based on the numerical value range you have to choose the respective data type either by short int or long then the next important one is floating point the floating point talks about the accuracy or precision what it mean for example we already know floating point talks about the decimal point number and you have a number 3.171 you have an input number number and this is the digit for calculation purpose you want to consider only six decimal digit that is 3 4 5 6 so i want to consider this number for the calculation then i can choose float data type okay i want my accuracy to be even higher for some scientific calculation purpose then i can go for 15 digit so it's like 3 point after decimal point it will consider 15 decimal digits for the calculation purpose integer talks about the range of number and floating point talks about the accuracy or precision of the number so based on your requirement you have to choose the respective data type then comes character it's a single letter which occupies only 16 bit 
then boolean it's just one bit we know true or false and we have something called void so it doesn't occupy any space hope you got a clear picture about the data type so the final summary the data type divided into two types primitive and non primitive and non primitive string we have seen primitive we have four classification boolean character integer and floating point based on the user input we have to choose the respective data type that's the end of this topic in the next video we will learn how to implement practically thanks for watching have a good day